right, brand new episode of FTO uh, Reviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what we're calling this, Reviews. FTO Reviews, we're reviewing the Batman. I'm... Man. Man. This is like a star of cast. This is a great look. I have been calling this movie um, a modern Western noir mixed in with a Shogun samurai feel. With a with a, a hint of Starcross lovers and an empire that is coming to a fall. Like I I love this story. Um, I can't stop talking about it. Like to people people I haven't talked to in years are hitting me up like, hey man, you see a new Batman movie? Like hell yeah, I see that new Batman movie. Like you you hard of seeing you never heard about that new Batman movie. Can't get enough of it. But uh, like always, gonna ask you first, man. Like what do you think about this movie? phenomenal wheezy f baby and the f is for phenomenal like it was fire like bruh like this movie like so one of my favorite batman stories is the long halloween and they said they were taking inspiration from that and they took a lot of inspiration from that like a lot like the fact that the movie starts out on halloween itself like that was like the second it started i'm like bro that's tough like you already know this is ready to get down like Yo. this whole movie is so much to talk about in this movie so first i like it first i like it i'm gonna give you my rating before we even start talking Dude, about i was it. about to do the same thing because it's a lot to talk about it's a lot to talk about all right so I, I don't know if I can rate it in numbers or flames this time i'll just rate it in terms of batman movies okay so I said that I thought this would be the best Batman movie ever. It was not. But it is it is that that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing cuz it's a, it's my third favorite Batman movie. After The Dark Knight Return after The Dark Knight Batman Returns and then it's this. Batman Returns like the second Batman like movie yes. that Burton did. That's that's With one of your Cat- favorites. Yes, with Catwoman and Penguin. Okay. That joint is that is my second favorite. It, it it didn't top that. This one was good. I think that the sec the sequel to this because you if you if you realize both those movies I mentioned were sequels. Yeah. The see I think the sequel to this could definitely top those, but I think but it's but it's I don't know. It just didn't top those for me. But that's not a bad thing. You feel that. me? Yeah, it's not a bad that. thing at all. I don't want that to take away from this movie at all because this movie was great. And then this movie probably was the most Batman movie out of any Batman movie we ever got, tell you the truth. I think it's like I think it's the most Batman movie we ever got. Like, this is like the most quintessential Batman story we've ever gotten. Uh I said this a few times in different reviews that my wife watched it with me and she said it was uh it was a lot of like Gotham politics inside of it. And I like the Gotham politics because, like, that is that is a Batman story. Like, like right. Batman, Batman yeah. is Gotham because Gotham is a character in the Batman story. Like, in the politics of Gotham, is why Batman is what he is. Like, you know, you can't you can't have Batman without the politics. Like, like the reason why Martha and Thomas were killed is because of politics. Because like they were organized crime. They they got somebody like Joe Chill. Like in different iterations, they got their a monster got Joe Chill to kill the Wayne family, or like the, the Gotham was so poverty that you know Joe Chill killed the Wayne family because like he needed money to score some more drugs. Exactly. So either like way, it, it has something to do with Gotham and it, how bad Gotham is. Exactly, Gotham is essentially a villain in the Batman it, story. I don't know if I call it a villain, <laughs> it basically is. <laughs> It puts people in danger. It's a, it's like a whole villain. It, it it does it does spawn a lot of horrible individuals. I will exactly. I will definitely say that. Like uh, it does like produce like the bad of the bad. Like it, everybody else is just henchmen. Gotham is the real big bad. Joker, Riddler, all of them are henchmen. Gotham yeah. is the big bad of Gotham. I mean, it did it did put a black turtleneck, long sleeve turtleneck shirt, and a gold chain around that wing in its adult age. So like it does have like its flaws. So you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's his style. Why does he dress like that? I don't know. I don't Nightwing. know either. <laughs> Besides Nightwing the point. Nightwing is a whole thought. So that's <laughs> <a> thought. <laughs> Night thought. That's right. Night yeah. thought. 
forgot about that. The whole thought in his cell. In uh, but uh, this this movie, it like Gotham really shined in this. Like uh, like the the city of Gotham was its own character. The politics of Gotham was its own character. And it looked great because you know they shot this, I believe, in over in the UK, I yeah. believe, mm-hmm. and it looked like Gotham, and it had its own look too. Yeah. It didn't look like Nolan's Gotham at all. It didn't even look like the Gotham that was in Batman vs Superman. No, nope. it didn't look like Tim Burton's Gotham. Nope. It like well, actually, which is kind of cool. All those Gotham's kind of have their own feel and look to them, but still kind of feel like Gotham. Yeah. But this one, this one, I really, I think this may have been my favorite look for Gotham as a whole. Like looked, this one was dirty. Tough. It looked like it was. It like it smelled foul everywhere you went. It was it had like, the gargoyles. Like, yes. It, it, it reminded me of the Gotham from the Joker movie, to be honest with you. Like, that's, hey, I got that. Like, Ooh. I feel like like that 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 Gotham was fast-forwarded, and, like, that's the that's the Gotham that we got was that Gotham. That's, that's the vibe I got. Gotham okay. I got. Okay. I like that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. It definitely did remind me of the Joker. <laughs> Most definitely. Ooh, yeah. Like, it, it, it lends itself, like, to being, like, you know, the, the sequel there. Oh, they could have got Joaquin to be in that cell. At the end of it, spoilers like about <laughs> <laughs> talking talking to the Riddler, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about some characters because, like, we can talk about yeah, that's just people. thinking that because we gotta, it's it's we gotta really, it's gonna be really. I was thinking about this as we start, like, it's gonna be really hard to do review because there's so much in this movie yeah. to talk about. We can talk yeah, about let's do, all day. Let's do the characters, let's start who you want to start with. Let's do Catwoman first because, fucking shit, dude. Like Kravitz, like Kravitz, man. Like I've I've been telling this to everybody. Like you know, hey Hathaway, like she she was she was a okay. Pfeiffer was <laughs> <laughs> Pfeiffer was a a damn bombshell that changed like that how we saw Catwoman. Kit is like the quintessential idea of Catwoman for so many people. Like when you think about Catwoman, if it's not Pfeiffer, it's Eartha Kit. I don't care what anybody says. Like it is. Point right. bo- point blank, but Kravitz, Kravitz did something with Catwoman where she was like a sex appeal, but she was also like you know very intelligent, but she was her own character at the same time. And like I right. cannot, I cannot take anything negative away from what she did as a character. Like, everything she did was like a plus over and over again. And she was still she was so mysterious, and that's one thing I really like. And I think she really just did this role, and it was like. It was Catwoman in kind of like a different but cool light for real, for real. Like, you know, she, we didn't even see her fully going into being like a jewelry thief or like a, like a robber. Like she just kind of was out there being who she was. Like she was just being Selena Kyle for real. Like she wasn't even fully like Catwoman yet for real. She was basically just hustling. Yeah, she was just hustling. She was Selena Kyle. And I also thought it was cool that she mentioned going to Bloodhaven. Like, that was pretty dope oh that God. they put that in there. Like, that was tough. Oh, my goodness, yes. All the, yo, the, all the Easter eggs. We're going to get to the Easter eggs. <laughs> we got to get to it. Yo, it was so many Easter eggs. We're going to get to that later. I'm sorry. We're going to continue talking about Kevin. <laughs> but Kravitz so, killed it. Yeah, Kravitz killed it. Like, the, I, I will say, like, a side note, like, the, the Nirvana soundtrack. Uh, the Nirvana song. What is the soundtrack? They should put every fucking song like that. But like the Nirvana song, something in a way. Whew. My goodness, man. Like I was in a theater with this. And like surround sound IMAX. Like in hearing that song in the background, dude. Fucking hell. That took me back, man. Yeah, this. Yeah, she was. She was on point. And I like that she was um, um, Falcone's daughter. Yes, I like that. Like from the long Halloween, yeah. I like that, like, bro, like, and then when she cut his face and he had to scratch, got the scratch on his face, that was tough, bro. That was tough. Like, Catwoman, Catwoman, I, like, my thing, so, right, it's, I think I still prefer Pfeiffer as Catwoman. I think I prefer her Catwoman, but it's really, it's close. Like it's a photo finish. Like it's she just edges it out just a little bit for me. But but then again, this Catwoman was like a year one type of Catwoman. This wasn't even really Catwoman yet. This was Selena Kyle basically she starting got, she, to become Catwoman, yeah, she got which was dope. Suit. Yeah, yeah, which was dope, bro. Like she, like I hope, like in the future, like she's like when they meet again, she's a full blown cat burglar. 
like, like full the blown goggles, like the everything, fucking, the full latex suit, she everything with the stronger. nails, with the nails to do the little circle thing, and then get her hand in there, still shit. Like, like I can't. Like, I hope that, like, in the future, like, so there was a rumor. It's a rumor. It's not actually set in stone, but they may be developing like a like a show with her or something like that. Nice. But. She That's got a just fucking a movie, movie, dude. Just give her, give, give her own like Bloodhaven, like Catwoman and Bloodhaven. Let's call it Bloodhaven. Like, give it like a robbery movie, but with Catwoman, like a bank robbery type of movie, but with. Have you Cat- read her run? Have you read like her DC run currently? That shit's good, dude. No, I'm only I just picked up the latest issue because it has Onyx in it, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're gonna get a chance, man, like check out her previous run, like uh, the rebirth stuff that she did, dude. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not like trying like you know sell you on Catwoman. I'm telling you like right now, like that. That entire rebirth run of Catwoman, good. The antagonist okay. inside of it, like uh, she kind of like steals people's essence and makes herself younger. So she's like the like the vulture essentially, without like like all the power. But like she's also like a politician on top of it, dude. Like real, it's good. Okay. It's a good. It's a good go. It's a good go. Check this out. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I think she interacted the best, like in all of this. <laughs> like I, I want to say Batman, but like that that last. The last bit with her and Falcone, like, phew. like yeah, when, like when, when she gets like, real, when she's trying to kill him and all that, mm-hmm. bro, like that scene was tough. Hits. Like that, it hits. Like her, just yo, like man, like yo, just that whole third act was kind of dope as hell for yeah. real. Like, like, act because the whole third act, you gotta think about it. Riddler is already caught by the time the third act begins. You feel me? He's caught. He's out of it. You feel me? He in jail. In the orange jumpsuit and everything, yeah. Everything. But he got his followers that continued it in br- that. Mm. Got me. It got me. That was good. Also, so since we talk about care, let's just go, since we are talking about Riddler, let's segue into Riddler. Let's do it. How, how did you feel about this Riddler? Like, because this kind of was like a, a whole new Riddler. He scared the ever living shit out of me. Yes, yes, yes <laughs> like period. Yes, yes. He, 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 like since like we first saw him in the politician's home with like his fucking goggles on, I right was behind the yo, fucking so, horrified. Like nope, <laughs> nope, nope. Bro, when they did that, when they did that, I was like, bro, we in a horror movie basically. So that's what it is. We in a horror movie. So like when I seen it, cause when I watch when you watch the scene, I watch a lot of horror movies, a lot of horror movies, and when you watch the scene. It feels like you know that somebody is going to be behind. When I first looked at it, I'm like, it seems like somebody's going to be behind. But I'm like, okay, that's not really going to happen. And because, you know, it's like a dark room, just the TV's on. It sets it up. And then when it actually happened, I'm like, oh, shit, they actually really did that. And then he looks horrifying. Like the gimp suit, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, in the gimp suit. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Bruh, yes, like that, yo, like he, like this Riddler, this is, this right here is my favorite iteration yeah. of the Riddler. He was definitely on the spectrum, but like he played that spectrum like flawlessly. Like he, he, uh, his interaction with the Batman, <clears throat> wow, uh, fuck. Oh shit. my God, let's talk about this, please. Let's talk about this. God. So, the, that scene was amazing. For one, the part, the, fact that they make it seem like Riddler knows that he's Bruce Wayne. Dude, like and you see those memes flying around, dude? <laughs> yo, I'm glad we can finally talk about this. I've been Ooh. wanting to talk about this because, like, I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, yo, does Riddler know that he's Batman? Because he was freaking he out. Him? He was doing like Jordan Peele sweat face. He was, he Bat- was freaking out, man. Batman was like, oh, my God, does Shit. he know? It, but then, then it, they rounded out that he doesn't really know. I was like, yo, that is crazy. <laughs> the way they did that. Oh man, that man! That scene, that scene was so well done, bro. Damn. That was so well done. I'm like, yo, just the how they, the suspense of it all. Like they just make you think that he knows that he's Batman, that Bruce Wayne is Batman, but he doesn't really know. Oh my god, that was that was amazing. That was simply amazing. So Riddler. This is my favorite Riddler. I like that they took inspiration from like the Zodiac Killer because yes. I think with this movie, is this movie basically felt like like one of them '90s psychological crime thrillers. I think there and, was there was an actual movie that uh, Paul Dana was in with uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal and and that Hugh Zodiac Jackman. Movie? It, it I don't think it was I don't think it's Prisoners. Movie called Prisoners. 
Oh, I is where that. is you haven't seen that one? Is no. uh is where Hugh Jackman like is a parent and his six year old kid was kidnapped and um the the detective is Jay Gyllenhaal. Jay Gyllenhaal, and then he's trying to no 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 hold on hold on hold on. I seen this movie. Yeah, and like you trying to find, find like who the killer is, like or, like the kidnapper is, and it's Paul Dano's character who's a driver and he kidnaps a kid. Like, you know, I think he, he had to pull from that character. Had to, like, and play, like, 100%. Off. He yeah. definitely is that character. That's yeah. Riddler in another universe. Right. That's yeah. First Riddler. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Yo, right. Right. I don't, no one's talking about that movie, like, in the comparison to, like, how he portrayed this character. But, like, I definitely Dan will pull a lot from that, from that character in that definitely- movie. The casting probably could have seen that and then been like, okay, we may want to go with something like that. Let's get, let's that, get Paul Dano. Mm-hmm. That's t- <laughs> oh, that yo, that oh, that's tough. Yeah, and yo, I also like that you only see like him for a little bit. Did they even ever say his name in the movie? Yeah, it's uh, it's Edward Manson, I think his name was. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was okay. Enigma, it was Enigma. It wasn't- Ah, which kind of sucks, but whatever. <laughs> but like that, like, it would have been, been too campy if they they gone that route. I like I like the campy part of Edward Nema. Edward, I Good like up. that. I like that. <laughs> but but it's but no, they, he was only he himself was only really in the movie like a little bit. Like yeah. you know, he had like the little videos and everything. I love when he, <laughs> when he was when the yo he was ready doing up. like a live stream. Yeah, yeah, and he was like. And then he was like, he was like Batman. He was like, you came. <laughs> he was so happy Batman answered his video call. And then he started spazzing on the yo. Ridiculous. That was the whole thing was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. But that right. scene was done. That scene was well. Every scene with the Riddler was just so well done. Like when, he got like when they one caught one. him, that was dope. Like that, that he was just doing the little thing in his, in his coffee. I mean, that was dope. I really like when he, when he caught that one uh, one attorney in the backseat of his car. And he, like, wrapped him up. That shit, fuck, dude. So I knew oh. that was going to happen. That So that scene, too, felt like a 90s yeah. thriller. Like, yeah. it like because you remember in the 90s, they would kill somebody, and then, like, the train would be going so nobody can hear this person and being you'd be killed. following a person like you didn't know, like, why we following this person on camera? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, it was just, like, bro, it, it was great. Riddler was great. My favorite iteration of Riddler. Who's next? Who are we talking about next? Penguin. <laughs> I was fucking thinking this. <laughs> so we're doing this in order like a few we thought were the greatest inside of this because <laughs> he was absolutely hysterical. Period. He was, he was great. I love this penguin. I love this. The The only thing that I don't like but it doesn't bother me is that he's tall. Because, you know, penguin has like Napoleon syndrome. Right. So that's what I love, but I don't, I don't care. I don't care. This, but like in this, he's like, he's like a, a Jersey, a Jersey fuckhead. Yes. Like that's yes. what he is in this. And like for those, those of you who don't know, I say this all the time. Bob, Gotham is Jersey. Gotham is not Chicago. Gotham's not New York or Manhattan. Gotham is Jersey. That's what Gotham City is. Uh, Metropolis is Delaware. Gotham is Jersey. So like him back a Jersey dickhead was like perfect for me. I loved it. Yo, it was, he was great. He yeah. was great. I love this penguin. Like he, like, Every part with him on it was just dope. Like he just seemed like a mob boss. Like, cause you know they're making a penguin show on HBO. Max. And like Falcone is dead, so he's gonna be like head of the Iceberg Lounge, and they're gonna they're gonna oh, have to yes. see that up. It's basically Ooh. gonna be, and they said they're going. They the their inspiration is basically like a mob type of feel. So like it's basically gonna have like a Godfather, Goodfellas type of feel with the penguin. yes. And that is what I need. Yes, that is what I need. And then for for people that. For if you like people that are listening that want a good penguin story that kind of goes along with, I think I'm hoping they take inspiration from it's called Pain and Prejudice, I it's believe. Yeah. Pain and Prejudice. And it's 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 a great story it's within the new 52. It's a story told from Penguin's point of view. So Batman in this story is basically kind of the villain because you know it's from Penguin's point of view. And it's I think it's like five or six issues, I think. Uh, maybe five or six but it's really dope and it follows penguin and i'm hoping like they take inspiration from that but it but this this penguin was also dope he's not my favorite penguin danny devito's penguin is still perfect but <laughs> keeps on going back to batman returns keeps on going back. <laughs> yeah you know, that movie was great that movie was great but yeah penguin this penguin was dope the the 
the scene, the the car chase scene. Yes. Like that scene was. Look at you! Look at you! I got you! (laughs) 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 Loved it, dude. And like his interaction with uh with uh with Gordon and Batman, like when they were they were doing like what is this? What is this? Bad cop, dumb cop? What is going on? Yeah, (laughs) he's like bad bad cop, bad shit cop. Yeah, that shit was hilarious. Penguin, penguin was penguin was definitely a highlight of the movie. He was definitely. Good comic movie. He, he was he was the MCU for the movie, definitely. Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> definitely had to do definitely. it. Had to do it. <laughs> definitely, he definitely was the MCU of the movie. Um, I mean, they had this movie had some little jokes in there every now and then, which they they weren't MCU jokes. They were like just well done jokes. Let's quickly talk about Alfred then, since that's the case. Like, uh, what do you think about Alfred about this? Alfred was good, but we didn't get much. Mm-mm. So, like, it's not too much to judge off. I think he's still going to be a dope Alfred, of course. But it wasn't too much to judge off. I just, the only thing we can judge off is their relationship. And yeah. I think right now it seems like a very, very, like, you know, kind of distant relationship. But it makes sense. Because, you know, like, he's, Batman is still young. Batman is still growing into his own and he and at the end after uh Alfred almost got blown up like he started he started you know realizing that him and Alfred that Alfred kind of is has been like a parent to him had his back um, through all this yeah yeah so that was dope that was dope to see their actual growth because I think which now that I'm thinking about it we never really see a growth in between Batman and Alfred. They mm. when when you come into a movie, even with you know Ben Affleck, his Alfred. Sorry, uh, uh, who else? Um, Christian Bale and his Alfred. All Sorry of them. Kind of, yeah. Who? Yeah, yeah. They're already established. They're like mm-hmm. already. They have that relationship already. You feel me? And then so this one, it seems like they're growing that relationship, which that was pretty dope. But him as Alfred, we have don't have too much to judge off of. But he. He's a great actor anyway. And yeah. I think I don't see him not being a good a- Alfred. We haven't got one bad Alfred in my opinion. So I got, I got a lot of that animated um, Alfred from his Alfred. Like, um, like Elfram is that a guy who played bat, uh, out the live at the animated Batman Alfred? From the but, animated uh, series? Yeah. But uh, I, I got like a lot of that, that vibe, Alfred. Like more of a <clears throat> grittier take. I, I will say this. Like, and, like, this is why I think it because of Alfred. I definitely think Reeves was a fan of the Gotham TV show. Like I, I, I definitely think that. And like he, he wrote this with his writer in mind while watching get a Gotham TV show because it felt a lot like Gotham at many points inside of this. Like it felt like the TV show Gotham as I was watching this movie. Definitely, definitely. And you see it, you, so you see it too. All right. No, hundred percent. And you know Matt Reeves is also writing that new animated Batman series show that's coming out. Like, I think he's writing one of the episodes of that. Like, it's like a Batman Cape Crusader, I believe it's called. And it's like an animated Batman series that he is either writing the episode of or writing a whole episode of. The Cape Crusader, you're right. Yeah. But, yeah, I definitely think he took inspiration from that. 100%. I think easily, because you got to think about the animated series was legit like a new war story. Like, every episode was Batman trying to figure out, like, different mysteries and shit and all that. So, I can easily see that. Like, that, you can definitely see that, especially with the way Gotham is and how. I think him and Gordon, I think Gordon, since, we know, we're talking about characters, Gordon seems a lot like, the animated series yeah. board. Agreed. Like a lot like Agreed. It's black. You feel yeah. me? So Agreed. Like, he, has, he has that gruff to him. He has like that 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 honor and trust kind of feel about him. He has like that definitely. like uh, I I gave everyone a benefit of about doubt kind of situation to him. You're like, yeah, I, I definitely feel that. Definitely. Like even having to work with Batman, he feels like that type of like the Gordon that we got from animated series. Like, you know, this is something that he sees that he must do mm-hmm. and this helping was going on is doing he sees it's doing more good than bad and then so like 
that I, and also I like their relationship. I like yes. their relationship in this movie. And it because I mean for most of the movie, it's them two together. And it's really just Batman and Gordon out there, just you know, that's that was the dope thing about it. It was based like a cop vigilante story. Yep. You feel me? And but like, much we talk about Kravitz, like you know, like how much she she kind of like shines like, like right did not slouch on his acting skills either. Like he really at all his game, at know? all. And it's like he just fit. I think. I think one thing that's gonna happen with this movie, we're not gonna talk about him as Gordon as much because all the great things that were in this movie. Mm -hmm. And I think I feel like the reason we're not is just because he fit perfectly. So good, yeah. That's like, exactly. He, he, he was so good at as that role. Like, yes, he was just like it's kind of it sucks because it seems like he was just there, but mm -hmm. in a good way because like it was like. He fit per. It was like the last puzzle piece. I said like like he's kind of like a plot device in a way, but like he he was like it was a very good and needed plot device for all of this. Yeah, like yeah. he was like, and then I think definitely he was in it. Like he wasn't in it a lot, but he was in it. It doesn't seem like he was in it a lot, but he was. And like, I don't think he had too many crazy speaking roles. He didn't speak a lot, a lot. You feel me? Like he said a couple of things, but he didn't say too much. But he still did a a good job like like it was he like him especially the scenes where they're at the signal looking over yeah. at the city like those scenes with him and batman were great like it just and it it was also felt like comic book too like yeah. it was very animated series but it <clears throat> felt like comic book like that one scene where catwoman gather up the the crooked cop and like had like the signal light going on and like gordon and batman showed up for that like that that was a good interaction. Like, and Gordon had like had a scene with almost every single antagonist. He had a scene with Falcone. He had a scene with Penguin. He had a scene with Catwoman. With the Riddler, he had a scene. He had a scene with everybody. And I can, like, I feel like 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 he is like kind of like forgotten because like he's he was so good at his role. Like, you know, he, he played that fit. role just so well. Yeah. Yeah, he just fit. Like, it was like it wasn't like. He wasn't like a, a gorgeous young woman, like that woman. He wasn't like wearing like a giant bat suit, you know, like a huge scar in his face, like the penguin. He was like, you know, like another average character, but like he really like they like play his role of Gordon, just as exactly. you said, he fit. And he just like he literally just that's the best way I can describe it. Is yeah. he he just fit like everything, and it was really he was really good. Like, like I don't think any of his parts slouched no for real. Agreed. Like at all. Like his like any scene he was in did not slouch. Like, man, that first scene when they came to the crime scene and it was them, like that whole scene, man, there was a lot of scenes just very well done in this movie. Like yeah, so, so, someone said really, like the reason why Batman was walking slow is so he can get everyone's face on his cameras. Yeah. Yeah. And then like and then but then that added to the dramatic yes. of everything. Like the scene where bro, okay, okay, so. Do we are we off characters? Can we just start talking about? Please, scenes? let's go ahead. I think like oh, we got like all the big ones out there. Stuff for Falcone, but you know we talked about him early, so yeah. No, he was good. Okay, Turturro. 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 He was good. He was good. He was real John, good. John Turturro, like uh, who, like yeah. you want to talk about a character that fit also. Turturro really fit that fucking oh, he just character, fit. dude. He just good. fit. Like, I was, he was and he was the one I was the most worried about when I heard about the castle. Like Turturro is Falcone. Can he really do a crime boss like Falcone? Though, like no, that was wrong. He's he can. Absolutely, again. Yeah. Yeah. He did a great job. He felt like a crown boss. He yes. definitely felt like a crown boss. But uh, scene wise, so let's so Batman's kind of like first scene where he's on the prowl and he's talking about Gotham, right? And he's like, you know, two years of night made me a nocturnal animal. Like, okay, that whole when that starts off and he's like, yo, the criminals are looking in the shadows because they're scared of him, even though he's not even in the shadows. They just looking into them during scared. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Then like he then the one where they come out where the kids is messing with the people and he like comes out and all that, like and he walks out slowly, like <sighs> I got me, dude. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, uh, I haven't been scared of Batman since like Bell did like the swear to me part. Like that since that happened, and like I heard that shit in theater and it scared the fuck out of me. But like them making that 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 joke about like you know like criminal get scared about shadows. We think Batman's gonna come out like he comes out and they look at the shadow, but he comes out from another fucking shadow. Like, yeah. oh, okay, no, <laughs> nope. All right, you win. No, like don't hit me. Was, <laughs> that was just too tough. And then, <clears throat> then also that scene. Also, uh, this is my head cannon. This is my head cannon that that black dude <laughs> is Duke gotta Thomas, <laughs> and that's my head cannon. That you know, he's gonna be up. back. Like he's gonna say, "Fuck Titan yeah. show." I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna be Robin or like uh, Signal inside a new Batman movie. That's yep, it. yep. That's my head cannon. But that scene, <laughs> that scene was great. 
Yeah, that scene was phenomenal. It really was. Whew, I'm basking in it. Like, it's like it, it got me. And like being like, you know, he beat all those guys up. He really butchered the hell out of that one dude. Like they had to gather. They had to pick him up and walk him out. That's how bad he got beat. So yeah. Yeah, he got beat up. <laughs> beat up. A lot of people were upset that uh, they got to beat up was an Asian person. And like, you know, with the uh, Asian violence on the rise, like that was like not the best option. I think like I think it fit because of that reason. To be honest with you, I feel like you, know, you know, God, they were chasing. Yeah. People think too much about stuff sometimes. People think way too much. It, it's it, number one. It's it's in the city, so you know there's different ethnicities all through the city. So right. that being an Asian person, like it just happened to be an Asian person. It just like, happened. To I make. feel like people just think too much about things. And it like they, they didn't pick him because they didn't pick him because like like he he like he like he shrugged his nose at him like when when and he got And he was up. on a bus by himself. He was a random person. They mm-hmm. seemed like a group of kids. They they literally had the video of them beating up random people. And he looked like a perfect target. He yeah. was by himself. He was leaving by himself. And he judged him in their eyes. Yeah. Yeah, so like it was a perfect target. Like people think too much about stuff sometimes. I, being, I'll give you that. Yeah. He literally could have been any race. It doesn't really matter. Like, they, said, well, they said, well, like, if you did the same thing, they would have beat him up regardless. I hear you. Right. Right. It's whatever. But, like, that scene was great. <clears throat> it, any scenes that you want to talk about? It was uh, the first interaction with Batman and Catwoman, like, when they first met each other in the, the Iceberg Lounge. When uh, Batman was talking to the Penguin and Catwoman just walked in the door. It was a very, like, Romeo and Juliet kind of feel. When and they, they looked at him real yeah. quick. Yeah. And, like, they and just I like this- that that he was like that he was scoping her out and then like he noticed her boots that helped him find her later like that was tough it was like sorry my my son's out here he's walking around and it's like almost midnight but uh like it it was it was a very like uh like it's like i said like a very Roman and jay kind of feel like it like it was cool watching like the the, the slow-mo from both of them and like you see penguin pick up on it too it was like yeah, that, that scene, that scene really, it, it stuck with me because like it was, since it was like year two Batman, like it was like you know we reading the comic books like how, how they they met for the first time, like this is their first meet and like even Penguin was it they they got a witness, exactly and then it was also cool it it was really and then you just see like the different that scene itself because it's like it's literally penguin catwoman and batman all in the same room yeah. together at once and it's like and then you like you said penguin was scoping out he's looking at the both of them like these two weirdos looking at each other like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> he, did, he didn't like selena either yeah 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 he was looking at he's like these two like what's going on with these people you feel me? like these weirdos looking at each other but yeah that was that that was a great scene and then like just Whole, everything with that scene, just yeah. him noticing Batman scooping everything out, noticing that you know Catwoman was watching them, noticing her boots that he noticed later in the picture, yep. like all of that was very Batman esque. Yes, and that was one all of my big takeaways. It was like him like actually being a detective without like throwing tons of paper on the fucking floor and looking around like, hmm, what does all this mean? That's like the only detective yeah. thing we got like from the Bell movie, like when. When Christian Bell put like tons of paper all over the floor in a circle, he sat in the middle of it. Like, come on, who does this? Like, this is whatever. But yeah, <laughs> that shit pissed me off. But yeah, like that—that that was a good detective. Like, he—he he was very aware. He obviously had some kind of like PTSD, like clear throughout the entire movie, Batman. Right. But uh, that's one character we haven't really talked about. But uh, I think I think Bell, uh, not Bell, but Pattinson did like you know such like a a good job as Batman. That like it's hard like that really pinpoint like what what good good moment he really had. Uh, the one that stuck out to me the most was his interaction with Alfred when he confronted Alfred about like his father's working with Falcone after his mom yeah. was found out to be in uh, in Arkham. Yeah. And try to cover it up, and like you know Falcone paid a visit to to the person who was blackmailing his family, like, and then like you know Bruce went to Alfred as he was in the hospital after he just got blown up and like confronted him about it like you know. Like aggressively, that 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 was the scene that that really stuck with me. Was that like it's like that's like his surrogate father. And like, and I feel like that's why Bruce attacked him like he did because like he was very pissed off at Alfred because like you know Alfred's been with him like for this entire duration of his life and he never once told him about that. And right, like it it got it got to him. Like, and we didn't see anything else get to the Batman. Like, not like except for the Riddler not telling him where all like the the bombs and shit were, but like you know. <laughs> Like that, that guy do him. That guy do him. 
also that bombs and shit was very Riddler. Good God, yes. That was when he did that. The second he was talking to me, he's like, it's not over. I'm like, this nigga said bombs around the city, didn't he? <laughs> and you knew it. You knew it. Like, yo, it's this, the most Riddler thing to do. Like, I set up bombs around the city, and you are not going to be able to stop him. <laughs> Tyra just went off. Ding! Yeah. Boom! Like, he Love said, it. I gave you the clues, but no, you was too late. Like, gave you all the clues, but you was way too late. He literally said, something like, oh, you're not as smart as I thought you were. Literally said those words exactly. to his face. Yeah. Exactly. Like, damn, dude. Like, shit. All right. And, like, you made me wonder, like, is he not as smart as he really thinks he is? Like, like shit. Hmm. I mean, it is year two Batman. He got I mean? <laughs> you know? But that's what I like, that this Batman has a lot of growing to do. Yeah. Like, they showed that he was not a perfect Batman. Like, mm-hmm. he wasn't. He ain't been in it for years. He been in it for two years. Just two. Prep time's so, not going to help his ass. <laughs> yeah, like, like. <laughs> And then what? And then also, oh, oh, I can't forget this. I definitely wanted to say this. This is a very small bit. This is a very small bit. I liked it. I, and I'm still trying to figure out what comic it was from. I think it's from The Long Halloween. But so when Falcon basically tells him, like, your dad helped me out that one time when he helped when I got shot or whatever and he brought me in and he basically doctored me up like that scene that's from a comic book there's this uh in I think it's a long Halloween where where Thomas Wayne does like a procedure on like gang member I can't remember if it's exactly Falcon but it's a gang member that comes in or somebody that's a head of like a family that that he works on that he knows is a mobster but he works on anyway right, like right. that was from a comic that was dope to me i'm still trying to figure out which one i, it I don't remember what comic that was from but i do know that they they pulled that and put it inside the long halloween the animated movie i know that for a fact so then i haven't watched the long halloween animated movie Got so it. it's Dude. probably in the comic it's like it's a damn good thing you didn't watch that movie before you watched the batman movie because they they pulled a lot from that movie and put that shit inside the batman movie let's no, talk I mean, about yeah. I mean, I can definitely because I mean, if if the long Halloween animated movie is inspiration, like, yeah. is like the comic book is like because the comic book I that is I there's a lot from the comic book that was in this movie. I haven't watched the animated movie because I'm not because I they killed the killing joke with that stupid ass animated movie they made. Oh, and so, so fucking bad. The first like 15 minutes <laughs> did not need to happen. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and it makes me mad because like the first 15 to 20 minutes after that is literally just the comic book why but, is batman having sex with batwoman like batgirl why? why why is this happening this does not like, need to fucking happen like i get like it, it can kind of make sense but like it didn't need to happen dude no it didn't and, no. and that's what makes me mad because the rest of the movie is basically just the comic book but the start of the movie is like yo we didn't need this at all but that's neither here nor there. That's something else. But yeah, I didn't watch that. Oh, then it must have been. Then it, yeah, that's something totally different. <laughs> but that, but that must have been in. It must have been a long Halloween if it was in a long Halloween animated movie. So that's the comic that yeah. Then that would be the comic where they got it from. But yeah, so that was a little dope scene in there that that's, stuck with me. That's why. That's. That's what. That's what got with you. All right. Like and like that was that was. I wish it would have shown the like, flashback of that. Yeah, I love when they take like small comic book things, like very small comic book things, and still put them in. It shows you that the writers and the directors were really doing their research to take something that small and just put it in there. You feel me? And that's what I like. A little time off for a second. And like, I love that too. And like, that's why reasons I don't like Nolan and I don't like Snyder doing comic book movies because I don't think they read the, read the comic books. I think they just like cherry pick things that people talk about from the comic books and put them in their films. Like, and that's that's what I don't like about those two directors directing comic book and superhero films. I don't think they, they actually read the comic books and they read them, they definitely don't absorb them. Reeves, you can tell he read this, and that's how I want to talk about next also is that uh, what comic books did you see in this movie? Because for me, I saw a long Halloween. I saw like the the gang wars inside of uh from Batman. I saw uh i saw like zero year inside of this i saw year two batman without of course without grundle good fucking i'm glad like that fucker wasn't in this i couldn't stand that character uh there, there, there's some other stuff i saw in this but maybe you can like you can feel like that that void that i'm missing out like but i saw a lot of batman stuff in this it's, one movie it's definitely a lot so i everything you said um 
what was that what was that thing about like uh also well i was thinking about different comics i remember like it took a couple elements from like quarter owls but not too much yes a little bit it took uh uh definitely venom <laughs> definitely <laughs> said those, let's just talk about it let's talk about it let's, let's, let's get right right back to another part let's just talk i know you've been wanting to talk about this for a while now <laughs> that scene where he shoots himself up with something is yo that is 100 not adrenaline it was green <laughs> It was green. It, he shot himself up with it and went into a rage. Like, I don't see nobody shooting himself up with adrenaline and going full crackhead on somebody. You feel me? So, like, that, I think that was, like, a prelude to, like, maybe the Venom. Because, like, if you got to think about it, the Venom storyline is basically Batman who's doing all this stuff for Gotham. Like, he is here. He's there. He's everywhere for Gotham. And he's running himself rabbit. And then he starts using like this form of like the uh, Bane Venom and he starts using it to help himself out to where the point where he gets addicted to it and he has to, he lock, he has Alfred lock him, slack him in the Batcave for months. I Yeah, months. I think maybe, I can't remember how much, I think it was like six months or something like that. He locks him in the Batcave for months and then he comes back out. He has to like retrain his body and shit like that. And then he has to come back out and be a better Batman. And it's one of my favorite Batman stories and I think they definitely did a prelude to that. Like, I can definitely see him going all full addict with some venom in like the second one, trying to be everything man for Bat for Gotham. So, like, if, if that is the case, if like if you if they, you are correct, and that is venom that we saw him he inject himself with, like, do you think like uh, he's already captured Bane, or that we'll see Bane in a in a, in a, a current movie? Like, how do you think how do you think like a Bane's gonna work himself into this? I don't know. He possibly he could not, because I mean, it could literally just be something that Batman concocted himself that he mm. found out over his travels and everything. Because like, I mean, they might not do Bane at all, but he, but like they said, this is year two, and also they also said like he, like spoiler, well, you spoiling the whole movie, but like you said earlier, like Riddler was talking to Joker in Arkham and in Batman and Joker, they said this, that Batman and Joker have already met. Like, so Batman and Joker, he like, he's already put Joker away, but he's not fully Joker yet. He's kind of just like a serial killer at this point, but they've already met. So we don't know. I don't, I don't think two years in Bane would be something that Batman would go through. You feel me? Especially two years in, because I feel like he would get his ass handed to him two years in by Bane. You feel me? Stronger fighter. Yeah. Yeah, he needs. He needs. <laughs> he needs. Yeah, he needs to grow more as Batman before he goes up against Bane. Because I think mean, because Bane literally comes in wanting to break him, and I feel like he's not gonna have to do much to break this Batman. So, I don't know. I think he could have just concocted this himself. It could lead to the Bane Venom that leads to Bane. Who knows? I mean, if they, do, if they do introduce Bane, I will say I wanted to be like, like the new woman Bane. The Bane that's a woman from the come from, uh, from Joker number two. Oh, true. I could yeah. definitely see them doing that. I would, I would like to see that one. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Like, especially if you bring back, if you bring back uh, Catwoman also, <clears throat> they usually like to have women fight against each other for some crazy reason. But yeah, I feel like that'd be, that'd be a cool thing. To see. That would definitely be tough. That would definitely be tough. But yeah, that 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 part was fine. Like I think I think they definitely prelude to Venom. Also, did you see? Did you catch the hush? Did you catch the hush Easter egg? No, I didn't. Oh my god! So okay, you remember that news reporter that they said that was found on information about the wings? All right. His name was I think either Thomas Elliot or something Elliot, and then literally the scene afterwards, they it was like they put hush like Riddler was messing with Batman because like they tried to hush him. So they put hush on the right. like screen. And then like the, the, the person's name was either Thomas Elliot or something Elliot, which, you know, it's hush's last thing. Hush is Thomas Elliot or what is hush's first name? Um, it's something Elliot. Uh, Thomas, Thomas Elliot. It is. Mm-hmm. I bet. I remember somebody's name. Yes. So it's Thomas <laughs> Elliot. So like, they basically set in, I felt like they set up for Hush. And they said that they would want to do Hush. Like, if they did somebody, they would want to do Hush. And, and I'm reading so, it now. Like, the reporter's name was Edward Elliot. 
Yes, yes. And then literally right after they had a joint that said hush on it. And yeah. then it was Riddler, Riddler messing with Batman, but it was literally an Easter egg. When I saw it in the movie, I jumped. I'm like, yo, that's hush. So they so it could be that, that Tommy is working working with the Riddler. He would want like one of those acolytes of his working with him to avenge his father who Falcone killed. And he like he blames the Wayne, even though like even though Thomas didn't tell Falcone to fucking do that, he told him like, to intimidate him. Yeah, that's, that's that's a good story point, actually. Yeah. Yes! It's, it's the same vengeance, it's the same hatred for the Waynes, and like he's taking that on Bruce. Like, you know, he's even, right there. Even, even if he doesn't know Bruce is Batman, like he still hates Bruce Wayne. So like, there you go. That's cool. And that hush, hush fits this this world of Batman. It does. Perfectly. Yeah, it's a lot more it realistic, does. actually. Yeah. It does, bruh. So, man, like that Easter egg, man. I was like, bruh, they they gotta do hush. They gotta do hush. Like they this movie has so many small little Easter eggs, like the venom, the hush. There was something else, of course. Joker at Joker in there. What else was the Easter egg that I seen? Oh god dang, I should have wrote these down. Yeah, I should have wrote them down too. I, I, I could. I couldn't like I couldn't write anything down in the theater for one when I first got to the theater. This is like like this is my experience of what happened there. When I got to the theater, first off, the lights were on. Like the lights lights. You know, like the lights turn off when the trailers are on. Yeah. They're on the entire time. And then what? like yeah, and then like maybe five minutes into the movie, like the lights got even brighter as we're sitting inside there. So like all that happens. And then like, you know, eventually the lights turns off. I'm like, getting tired. Dude, I was I was heated the entire time. Then like the volume went, went down a little bit. It's like okay, it was Somebody it was a fuck with y'all. It, it was a bad experience. It was a bad experience going to see this movie. Like I, I I did not enjoy myself for the first like ten minutes of that movie. So like uh like I was already a little a little heated getting into it. But uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a not fun experience going to see that movie. True, but yeah, I mean. That joint, but that there was a lot. I, yeah, I didn't write the Easter eggs down because, like, I never really write anything down. But <laughs> I, I remember you I just remember the, names. That's that score one, man. Look at that. Yeah, I remember these names, but like, I remembered it. I mean, this, but this movie, it was so good at subtly giving you Easter eggs without actually. It was like it's it put it right in your face without putting it right in your face. Like that hush, like literally was right in your face. But if you weren't like keeping up with it, like you could have easily missed it. Like and it, it was something you could have easily missed. But when I saw Elliot and I saw hush, I was like, bam, bam, easily. But there were other Easter eggs. They laid in so many Easter eggs. Oh my God. I just, uh, I just went to the nurse, the nurse staff to see some Easter eggs. Like we, we called out some of them. We called out some of them. Uh, year zero. Like they made a reference that the year zero was a part, like it seemed like it was a part of the story, which uh score one for me. I guess that one correctly, right on. Yeah, uh, zero year. Yeah, that's a that's a new fifty two story, I think it was. Like yeah. It was yeah. Yep, that was where Duke Thomas got first introduced. Yes, that's right, as a kid. Yeah. Uh Bloodhaven, the world's greatest detective line to use inside the movie. Yep. Uh the the Shakespeare head and the red phone was an Easter egg. For the 69 Batman. That was the other one. It had an element of 69 Batman because like his suit was very 69 Batman, like very much Adam West Batman. Like his suit, if you like really look at the details of the Batman suit, it looks a lot like Adam West's Batman suit. I but, tried not to think about Adam West's Batman ever. I figured you would. Like you 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 strike me as a guy who did not like that Batman. No. <laughs> not whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely try to miss the kind of like, like, I don't, that shit's too corny. I ain't about that. Yeah, that. it's way too corny. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool that. and all, but I am not for me. It's my, not for my, me. My, 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 my uncles and aunts and, and parents, like, they got me into that. So, you know, kind of had to go with the flow with that one. But I I can't go back and rewatch it now. So, no, I feel yeah. but like it, it did, it did have like the feel of Six Not Batman, like with the phone, with the, the Shakespeare head, with like the Batman suit, because his, his cowl. Is almost identical to Adam West's cowl, like almost, like it's it's it crazy. Is. Yeah, it is similar to it. But yeah. uh, I think that's I think that's all I got. Like overall, man, like this movie is phenomenal. It has like a star-studded cast. Like the story is oh, studded. It will keep you on your toes. I'm very disappointed. That I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of this. Like you know, oh. it's three hours long. Like what that? I don't feel too bad. It's three, it's three hours long movie, dude. Do that. I don't feel bad. <laughs> but like, but yeah. it comes out on HBO Max April 19th. 
Was that when it was? Is, is it April or June? It's April 19th. Next Whoa. month, it come out on HBO Max. I'm going to watch the fuck out of it. I know I'm doing on 420. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Not leaving my house. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> you're going to leave me the fuck alone. I'm watching Batman. I'm going to give me a hotel room. That's all I'm do. Avoid these damn kids. Take my Chromecast, get a hotel room, and watch the Batman over and over again. Yeah. It's going to be great. You don't fade your tattoo scratching like that, man. I'm not trying to. It's, Is it new? Gotta, it's not really on my tattoo. It's kind of on my vein. It kind of makes me look like a crackhead, but I'm don't, not. Tell, <laughs> tell, 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 tell your parents. <laughs> but yeah, so for me, so this movie was phenomenal. Like I said, it's probably in my third mm-hmm. with Batman movies. Hello, we got a little appearance. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, it's midnight and he's still awake. He took a last long nap. Why are you looking like crazy? Dude. <laughs> All right. All right, love you, man. Go, I'll get you a second, a second. Let me finish this review. <laughs> <laughs> I feel him. I took a nap earlier today too, and I'm wired. <laughs> wired, yes, he is like dancing and whatnot, watching cartoons. So yeah, it's uh, it's a fun time. But yeah, this movie, this movie was great, and the best thing about this movie is everything that's ready spawn from it. They already have. So I don't know if you heard this, but the Gotham PD show is turning more into like an Arkham show, right? Which right. I, I either or I'm fine with either or both is fine with me. Give give me like the, the low run Batman characters. I am here for that. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Give me those. Give me give me the bat characters. Like I and oh also in this movie. Also, also I forgot this. So them twins, they gotta be Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I mean they gotta they're, be. they're not very bright. So they yeah. Gotta, they they, they gotta, gotta they gotta or either that like or like the the two faces twins. What was this twin's name? Oh, I, forget I thought those were Tweedle D and Tweedle Dumb too. Does he see like they they just they just work for different guys for Matt Hatter and and Two Face? I know they they work because I mean they work for Penguin too. They work for Penguin. I know they work with Matt Hatter, but I think let me see Two Face. And they had yo they gotta work with Two Face. It's Tweedle D and Tweedle Dumb. It's two of them. It's all over. It's all over the internet. Like I, you type in henchman and Two Face, like twins. Yeah, twins. You're right. Twins, 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 You're right. My bad. You're right. Yeah, yo, them twins. They had to be Tweedy and Tweedy Dumb. There's no way they're not. Like they, they. As uh, soon as I seen them, as soon as I seen twins working for Penguin, I'm like, that's Tweedy and Tweedy Dumb. That gotta be easy. They're, they're they're the kite man of the of the henchman world. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are <laughs> they were so oh, dumb. also they say kite man from the uh kite man from the uh harley quinn series may get his own series what that's a rumor that's a rumor what? i don't know if it happens oh I my goodness i love kite man kite man like kite man is a lot like vigilante like he's an idiot but he's also an ally and i love it i, lo- I love the hell out of kite man yes i like him in that he kind of got on my nerves in the war of jokes and riddles but hey he was a punching bag. He was, and he get he just I don't know the story was so good, and he just was in it, and I just felt like he didn't need to be in it. What? But that's neither, that's neither here nor there. Well, you just said that. You can't just gloss over that, dude. What? I don't feel like he needed to be there. It I was such a like, sad story. I don't think Kite Man needed to be there. <laughs> Disappointing. Disappointing. Yo, you're killing I me. I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. But. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking, dude. Uh, you know how I how I killed a movie we're talking about like political stuff you killed a movie by saying stuff like that I can't believe you just said that can't believe you I don't know I mean hey. <laughs> he doesn't care I mean next topic <laughs> yeah I mean it's not like he was it's I don't know he I just feel like he may not need to be in war jokes and riddles at all he may all right, not just need to be in that but he was great in Harley Quinn though and yeah, if he gets his own show, oh my god, I'm watching the hell out of that. It's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna it's gonna be like all the, all the stuff that we uh we wanted to what? be and more. Yeah, I think it's gonna be further making fun of just. I think it's gonna be way more Gotham villains just making fun of all of them. Who's gonna be a second though? You can't just have one show by itself. You gotta have them, like hanging out with somebody. Like who's gonna who is Kite Man gonna hang out with? That's what I want to know. That's the million dollar question right there, man. Like you gotta give like a like a rogue. Uh, one of the flashes rogues, something like that. Yeah. Hmm, that's a good question. 
there's this there's this new mm, excuse me, there's this new character that may work. Um what is his name actually? He's in the Suicide Squad now. He's basically like the new he's like he's a fourth wall break character. And he's in the he's in a new Suicide Squad and he just breaks the fourth wall all the time. I don't even know what this man's powers is. I just know he's always breaking the fourth wall and he basically is describe, describing the comic to you as the comic reader and it, it's funny because in the comic he's telling people like yo that happened to issue two and they're like what are you talking about <laughs> and he's like he's like we're in a comic book but they don't even they don't even listen to him is it ambush book and there he goes ambush, a- ambush Dude, he, he is he is like the he's he's the fourth wall breaker he was before Deadpool. like he is the guy who uh-huh. broke the fourth wall oh yeah Oh yeah, I just he he been in the Suicide Squad lately. That's how I. What the fuck? And which book is in the Suicide Squad? Yes, he is. My my voice is getting very hot because I'm very surprised by hearing this, but I'm also a big fan of Ambush Ambush Bugs, Batmite, like those. Uh, I like those stupid characters. I know like you couldn't give a rat's ass less about those characters, but I love those characters. I think I just lost Malcolm or uh, you a nerd. This is a. Uh, this is a. Uh, this is Dean of Dinner Talk. Make sure you check out Yo a Nerd at uh, anywhere you find Yo a Nerd on Twitter. Until next time, you guys take it easy.